Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Markham from the UNC School of Government, and in this video I'm going to explain how an active sentence for a DWI in North Carolina is served. If you're watching this video, you probably already know that DWI in North Carolina is not sentenced under structured sentencing. Instead, it has its own rules. They're set out in Chapter 20, and they're summarized on this chart that was prepared by my colleague Shay Denning. And what it shows is that for each level of DWI, from the most serious, the aggravated level 1, down to the least serious, level 5, um, the judge really has two options at sentencing. The first bullet shows uh, what the sentence has to look like if the judge gives an active sentence, and the second bullet shows what it looks like if the judge wants to suspend that sentence and put the defendant on probation. The second bullet shows what that probation needs to look like. This video uh, is about the first option in each row, is about active sentences for DWI. So let's walk through a few examples of how active sentences work. For our first example, let's uh, look at a level 1 DWI. Um, so we're, we're at this level here, and what you can see in, in the sentence requirements is that there's you know, a requirement for a minimum and for a maximum. Let's do an example using the lowest minimum that the judge can order, a 30-day minimum and a 24-month maximum. Let's see what that means from the defendant's point of view. As far as how that would look on the judgment form, uh, you can see that it would be, you know, the offense would be impaired driving, the, we're talking about a level 1 DWI, the minimum term would be 30 days, the maximum would be 24 months, and the proper place of confinement for any DWI now is the statewide misdemeanor confinement program. But, but what does that actually mean in practice? Well, let's uh, shrink this down and scoot it up here to give us a little bit more room to work. Um, and take that 30-day to 24-month sentence and put it out on a timeline from 0 to the maximum of 24 months and show our minimum sentence of 30 days. What does all that mean? L let's start with the maximum. The maximum is going to tell us uh, when the sentence is going to be fully served. And you'll often hear it said that DWI sentences are cut in half. And, and that's true uh, because of the sentence reduction credit that applies to DWIs as a matter of uh, Department of Public Safety administrative policy. And the credit that applies to DWI sentences is called good time. And the good time rule is that the inmate gets an extra day of credit for every day served on the sentence without a violation of inmate conduct rules. Well, if you get two days of credit for every day you serve without infraction, the, the practical effect of the rule is that the sentence gets served in half the time. So it's not going to be served in 24 months, but rather will be served in its entirety after 12 months. And by the way, while I have this language from the administrative policy showing, uh, notice who gets good time, who's eligible for good time. It's two categories of inmates. It's people uh, serving time for impaired driving, regardless of offense date, or felons committed prior to October 1st, 1994. Well, felonies prior to October 1st, 1994 weren't sentenced under structured sentencing. They were sentenced under fair sentencing, under the Fair Sentencing Act. And sometimes you'll hear people say that DWIs are sentenced under fair sentencing. They're not. They're sentenced under their own rules in Chapter 20, but the Department of Public Safety does choose to administer DWI sentences in the same way that it administers fair sentencing felonies. It applies the same credit to DWIs that it applies uh, to those older felony offenses. So anyway, with that good time rule in place, we know that our maximum sentence of 24 months will actually be served uh, in about 12 months. So that's the effect of the maximum sentence. What's, what's the deal with the minimum sentence? Well, you, you may know that DWIs, unlike almost anything else in North Carolina, are eligible for parole. And the parole eligibility rule for DWIs uh, is set out in General Statute 15A-1371, and it says that the inmate's eligible for parole uh, after serving the minimum or one-fifth 
of the maximum penalty allowed by law for the offense, so the statutory maximum for that level of DWI, whichever is less. And so just to sketch that out in a little bit different way, parole eligibility, at least as a matter of timing, comes at the minimum that the court imposes or one-fifth the statutory maximum, whichever is less. In our case, the minimum was 30 days, and the maximum, the statutory maximum, was 24 months. That's what it is for a level 1 DWI. One-fifth of that is 4.8 months, and so whichever is less, well, in this case, it would be 30 days, and so as a matter of timing, the inmate would be eligible for parole after 30 days. Unfortunately, uh, at least from the, the inmate's point of view, is that in addition to those chronological requirements, there are some other uh, criteria that the inmate has to meet before being paroled. And those requirements are set out in General Statute 20-179P3, which says that a person can't be uh, paroled until he or she has obtained a substance abuse assessment and completed any recommended treatment or training, uh, or uh, he or she gets paroled directly into a residential treatment program. And what we're talking about there, the options are uh, the 90-day programs. Uh, for men, that would be the 90-day program at Dart Cherry. And for women, the equivalent option uh, would be the 90-day program at Black Mountain. So you either need to complete your assessment and treatment before being paroled or be paroled into this program where you can get uh, your residential treatment. So if we put everything together for this 30-day to 24-month sentence for a level 1 DWI, we can see that the 24-month sentence will actually be served uh, in 12 months because of the good time rule. And then as far as parole eligibility, you have this window uh, from 30 days until the max out point at 12 months that, you know, assuming the person has either completed their substance abuse assessment and treatment or uh, they get paroled to uh, Dart Cherry or Black Mountain, that's the window during which the Post-Release Supervision and Parole Commission in Raleigh could, in its discretion, choose to parole the person uh, before they get to their max out date. Now, what would happen uh, if we had a sentence for a level one impaired driving, uh, same maximum term of 24 months, but instead of the 30-day minimum term that we talked about with our first sentence, what if uh, you saw, what you often see, that the minimum was also 24 months. What's the practical effect of that sentence? Well, let's chart it out. And starting at zero, going out to the maximum of 24 months. As far as the maximum goes, it's going to be the same as the first sentence. Because of the good time rule, we know that that 24 months will actually be served in 12 months. It will get cut in half. Uh, and that's when the defendant would reach the, the outright release point. As far as the minimum, remember for DWIs, minimum sentences are directed at parole eligibility. And the parole eligibility rule from 15A 1371 is that the person's eligible for release on parole uh, at the minimum or one-fifth of the statutory maximum, whichever is less. Well, one-fifth of the statutory maximum is going to be the same for this defendant as it was for our other level one defendant. Uh, it's one-fifth of 24 months, which is 4.8 months. The minimum is higher, of course. It's 24 months instead of 30 days. But the rule is you take whichever is less. So 4.8 is obviously less than 24, and that is when our inmate is eligible for parole. And in fact, uh, we didn't talk about this before because the 30-day minimum was al already at the sort of rock-bottom statutory mandatory minimum for a level 1 DWI, but good time credit applies to the parole eligibility date too. So in fact, that 4.8-month uh, parole eligibility window 
will actually open up at 2.4 months. And so what that means is the parole minimum will be at 2.4 months, and this defendant's parole eligibility window will extend from 2.4 to the max out date at 12 months. And so if you compare that to our first defendant who had the 30-day the uh, minimum sentence with the parole eligibility window that opened there, really the, the practical difference between the 24 to 24 month sentence versus the 30 day to 24 month sentence is that you've caused this person's parole eligibility window to open up uh, about a month and a half later. A and really as a practical matter, because most people don't get paroled at all, much less early in their parole eligibility window, uh, it really doesn't have any practical effect at all. What it's likely to result in is the person getting released from prison at the max out date at the same 12 months. Let me do one more quick example, something other than a level 1 DWI. This time, let's do a level 2. Uh, and looking at Shay's chart, you can see that the permissible active sentence for that has to have a 7-day minimum uh, up to a 12-month maximum. So this time, we have impaired driving. Uh, but level 2 instead of level 1, Let, let's have the, the judge give the longest possible sentence for a level 2, which would be 12 months. And let's, as a starting point, let's have the, the minimum sentence be the same as the maximum, 12 months. And this one, like the other, would be served in the misdemeanor confinement program. What, what does that look like in practice? Well, we have the maximum of 12 months, but the good time rule is going to apply to this sentence just like it did to the level 1. It's going to have that 12 months uh, actually served in around 6 months, so that's the max out date. As far as parole eligibility, the rule here is still the minimum or one-fifth the statutory maximum, whichever is less. The minimum here is 12 months, but one-fifth the statutory maximum for a level 2 DWI is one-fifth of 12, that's 2.4, but because of the good time rule, that 2.4 months is actually served in 1.2 months. And so this person's parole eligibility window opens up at the 1.2 month point. And that is the window during which the person could be released on parole if he or she had completed the substance abuse assessment and treatment, or if the parole commission paroled the inmate directly to Dart Cherry or Black Mountain. And had the court imposed a minimum term uh, of, say, seven days, that's the lowest permissible minimum for a level 2 DWI, uh, instead of that 12-month minimum, the effect of that, you know, would be to make the minimum seven days, it would then be less than one-fifth the statutory maximum, and so it would drive the opening of that parole eligibility window and cause it to open up you know, about a month earlier than it otherwise would when the minimum and maximum were the same. All of the rules that I've talked about in this video technically apply to any impaired driver who gets an active sentence from level 1 all the way to level 5, but what you see as a practical matter is that a lot of the lower level defendants are, are going to get probationary sentences and so different rules apply to them and that even when they get active sentences or when they have their probation revoked, their sentences are so, so short, especially when you take the good time rule into account, that parole doesn't become a factor in any event. And finally, the, the last remaining category, the aggravated level one, the rules for those are, are so different from everything that we talked about that, that I'll do a separate video um, covering how those work. So I hope you find this session helpful. But as always, feel free to contact me with any questions. Thanks.